Welcome to the Free Truth Show. Attempting to break through all the lies and deception of the mass media, which is owned and controlled by the very elite that have engineered this global financial takedown. The Free Truth Show is dedicated to exposing the New World Order eugenicist depopulation agenda. The global banking cartel is facing world resistance, world resistance like never before in history. time for you to stand up too. Welcome to the Free Truth Show. Welcome everybody to the Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio. Our special guest this evening is Dr. Rebecca Carley, MD, a world-renowned expert on the dangers of vaccines. The chemtrails are very real and pose a very serious risk to uh, the health of humanity. The fluoride is very dangerous for people. It's one of the main constituents in rat poison. The Nazis used it in the camps to keep the inmates malleable. It's been shown to reduce your IQ and give you bone cancer. Yes, fluoride is a big problem. The vaccines also are part of the ongoing depopulation agenda initiated by the global banking cartel. What's not known and not shown in the media, in the mass media, is the wide-ranging damage it does to people. So we're going to um, get as much information out there as we can to people and hopefully encourage people to warn others about these dangers. And I'm delighted to welcome to the Free Truth Show, Dr. Rebecca Carley. Are you there, Doctor? I am here, Patrick, and thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, yes, people need to learn about all of these things. If they go to my uh, new website, which is much easier to manage, it's called reversingvaccineinducediseases.com. I encourage people to click on the diagrams. Um, there's four diagrams on there and then a series of YouTube videos where I explain the diagrams. The first diagram is called the big picture and it mentions all of the, you know, toxic assaults that you've already mentioned and many others. And when you realize the totality of the mass poisoning that's happening globally, um, the most amazing thing to me is that anybody's able to live or think. Well, it's just emerged today that President Obama's budget includes a breakthrough to address medical mal malpractice reform and move beyond partisanship. That's the headline. New York, February the 16th, 2011, PRN Newswire. Uh, President Barack Obama's recently unveiled federal budget for fiscal year 2012 calls for, and I quote, a more aggressive effort to reform our medical malpractices to reduce defensive medicine, promote patient <coughs> safety, promote patient safety and improve patient outcomes and encourages Republicans to work constructively with him on medical malpractice as part of an overall effort to restrain health costs. It then allocates funding for state-by-state -state implementation of medical justice reform initiatives, including health courts, and so on and so forth. Uh, Obama's health care bill, uh, Dr. Carley, uh, would you like to um, give us a better idea of just how unhelpful it is? Well, first of all, if I could just back up, um, on February 22nd, the United States Supreme Court ruled against parents in a vaccine case. Uh, this is a very important case because um, in the States we have this vaccine court, which is run by special masters. There's no... Um, Juries, you know, involved uh, basically a what's called the special master sits there, listens to the evidence prevent, presented in regards to um, someone being damaged or killed by a vaccine. 
and decides whether or not they're going to get any compensation as if there's any compensation that would, you know, basically, um, you know, be adequate to restore your health or, you know, make up for the loss of a life. And in this most amazing case, the child had just gotten the DPT shot hours before she started having debilitating seizures, which have uh, remained for decades. And despite this obvious temporal relationship, you know, vaccines shot into the child, child starts having seizures, the judge ruled in vaccine court that they did not present an adequate case. In other words, they didn't prove that the daughter was damaged by vaccinations. So what the parents did was they went against the manufacturer of the vaccine, which uh, was Wyeth, which has now been taken over by Pfizer, and sued at the state level trying to, uh, you know, win compensation in the state Supreme Court in Pennsylvania. And the case went as high as the United States Supreme Court. And as I said, on February 22nd, uh, these criminals in the Supreme Court have actually ruled that in order to basically um, prevent there being a disincentive for manufacturers to put vaccines on the market, Uh, Because, you see, there's three things that are not covered by insurance. Acts of God, nuclear war, and vaccinations. Right. So they want to make sure to keep these vaccines coming. So in order to prevent people from suing, as these parents did in Pennsylvania, they ruled that these parents have no right to do so. So the reason I wanted to back up to that situation is because now we, we already have these vaccine courts totally corrupt. The taxpayers fund it. They've already paid off almost $2 billion since these uh, vaccine courts were instituted in the 1980s. Right. And that's even with all kinds of hoops the parents have to jump through. Now they want to do the same thing with all of Big Pharma. Develop these health courts where there's no jury and a judge is going to decide if you've been, quote unquote, treated properly. I do see this from the USA Today article, Supreme Court Rules Against Parents in Vaccine Case. I'll be posting up the links at the end of the show for people to see these articles themselves. Um, So (laughs) parents can't expect any help from the justice system at all, really. I mean, um, the congressmen and the senators and a lot of the top judges um, are being paid off. There's no other excuse for it, really. There's no other reason... (laughs) why they should rule against uh, people. Exactly. And as I said, now they're going to do this with all of medicine. And you see, I, I always laugh. I mean, if people go to my website, you can read my bio and you'll learn that, you know, I was a yeah. traditional medical doctor. I thought that that's how I would help people. I was trained as a surgeon and then I started seeing uh, such corruption and fraud experimentation on people and then my own son was brain damaged from vaccines. So I've been investigating these issues for almost 15 years. Yeah. Um, but when they talk about medical malpractice, what a joke. All the doctors do is hurt people. The Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm. All they do is harm. They don't have a clue how to cure anything. So this idea of malpractice, you see, and that's why the government is now going to develop these practice protocols They're going to tell the doctors what to do. If a patient comes in with symptom X, you give them drug Y, and if it kills them, it doesn't matter. They get nothing because you did what you were told. A friend of mine worked in a supermarket, and they were very proud to to work there, and they, they were very diligent in their work and very proud of their own work. But I remember saying to her some years ago, there will come a time talking about the food now but there will come a time when everything you eat will be bad for you as regards to the drugs that um, are pushed by the medical mafia is there any kind of medication is there any kind of pill that you would trust that was made by the pharmaceutical companies at the moment well let me first give out my little disclaimer on the, the medical mafia went after me in 2003 and took away my license saying I have a delusion of conspiracy because of a public access TV show I did. 
Yeah. So I always have to tell people, I'm yeah. not giving medical advice. I yeah. do not practice medicine. I'm telling you what I would do if I was you. Yeah, I know, I know the drill. <laughs> I know the drill. Okay, so the answer to your question is no. There is not a single pill that I would take, not only mm. because of all the side effects, but there's all kinds of strange things happening. I have clients all over the world that I teach them how to reverse their diseases, not only how to detox vaccines, but pesticides, radiation, and aspartame fluoride. There's ways to get rid of all these poisons. But, yeah. but I'm hearing all kinds of strange things. Like I have an elderly gentleman client who has insulin-dependent diabetes, and every time he takes his insulin, his blood sugar skyrockets. I've had people taking antihypertensive drugs who take their drugs and their blood pressure skyrocket. So I am now convinced that they're intentionally putting out certain drugs, maybe to certain people, maybe randomly, I don't know. But you see, once something like that happens, what, what occurs? You go to the white coat, you say, okay, this drug is not working for me, and what do they do? They stick you on something else. And before you know it, you're on 25 drugs. I've had a number of clients, mostly elderly clients, that are on 25 drugs. And this is a toxic soup. Uh, nobody knows the interactions of all of these things. And so what I would do if I was you people is, first of all, you must educate yourself. Learn about the ways we're being poisoned. Um, learn how to detoxify yourself. Grow your own food if you can. I totally agree with Patrick. Yeah. What they're doing for the food now, they're actually making vaccines out of food. Um, they're killing us in so many ways. Yeah. Well, the the GMO is a problem. The the pesticides and the herbicides used in um, even organic food. I don't even trust that. There's um various right. chemicals in that now. Mm hmm. Um, uh, this uh, f this Pfizer executive vice president Amy Shulman, um, going back to the vaccine and the decision, the state court decision, uh, praised the decision, stressing that expert federal agencies, who there's the experts again, uh, the ex oh, yeah. the experts that say, and you know they they're never named. You ever notice that <laughs> experts say, experts say, mm -hmm. uh, they should determine the and I quote the optimal. D optimal design of life-saving childhood vaccines. Washington lawyer, I mean, this is USA Today, and my local paper, the, the Bournemouth Echo, is owned by the Gannett Group, uh, which is USA Today. So we get the same kind of vaccine rubbish here um, in our local rag. Uh, Washington lawyer David Frederick, who represented the, the Brucevitz family, and it's claimed that an outdated design caused Hannah's injuries, said the decision lifts any incentive for drug makers to comport with the most recent scientific advances in designing safer vaccines. There was more at stake Tuesday than a single case, says Paul Offit, heads, head of infectious diseases at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and inventor of a vaccine against rotavirus, a, a diarrheal illness. He called it a very good day for kids and parents. Do you care to comment well, on that? I Please let me comment on this, Paul Offit. He is the major vaccine minion now, now that Maurice Hilleman of Merck, Sharp, and Doan has passed on mm -hmm. and is rotting in hell. Good. Um, Paul Offit is actually taken over in his place. Now, what they don't mention in this USA Today article is that Paul Offit, inventor of a vaccine against rotavirus, the rotavirus vaccine was actually taken off the market because... Hundreds and hundreds of children developed a surgical emergency called intussusception when they took that vaccine, which basically makes the bowel telescope inside itself, and you end up with bowel death. So they have to cut out large chunks of bowel. Right. So the vaccine he developed is not even on the market anymore, and yet he has the nerve to say that this is a good day for kids and parents. This man is pure evil. And he's written a number of books. If I could just mention a couple of them. Sure. Um, if you can order them someplace like Amazon, you know, there, people are selling them very cheap because they're such garbage. But I get them just, you know, so I can speak about these issues. Yeah. His latest book is called Deadly Choices, How the Anti-Vaccine Movement Threatens Us All. <laughs> and I have one-sentence response to that. If vaccinations work, 
How are, how are all you vaccinees being threatened by the fact that I'm not vaccinated? Okay, so the, the very concept of what he's saying is insane. But the most yeah. interesting book that he has written is called The Cutter Incident, How America's First Polio Vaccine Led to the Growing Vaccine Crisis. I am shocked that he wrote this book because th what this book talks about was a polio vaccine uh, that was developed in the 1950s mm. that was far worse than the disease caused by natural polio. Thousands and thousands of people died. Right. And he talks about this. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he knows exactly what's going on. All of these people are in on the depopulation agenda. Uh, I had already sent, also sent you a link uh, to Bill Gates giving a talk in yeah, California just, last yep. year talking about using vaccines for depopulation. Isn't that special? Well, here's the article. Um, Bill Gates says vaccines can help reduce world population. This is from naturalnews.com. It's Mike Adams, I believe, right? That's his site? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, top guy. Um, I would recommend that site also, um, as well as your own, of course. But I'll just read the article. It's um, from naturalnews.com. In a recent TED conference presentation, Microsoft billionaire Bill Gates, really he's just a front man for the Royal Institute of International Affairs, stroke Council on Foreign Relations, who has donated, mm -hmm. who has, who's donated hundreds of millions of dollars to new vaccine efforts, speaks on the issue of CO2 emissions and its effects on climate. He's got a formula here, P, people, S, services, E, energy, C, CO2 per energy unit. A nice little formula for murder. Then he adds <laughs> that in order to get CO2 to zero, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty close to zero. Following that, Bill Gates describes, begins to describe how the first number, P, for people, might be reduced. And he says, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job, great, on new vaccines, <coughs> if we do a really great job on new vaccines, healthcare <coughs> reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15%. Now, we know that the, um, the New World Order is uh, hell-bent on reducing the world's population by 90%. That leaves, uh, the current figures, that leaves about 500 uh, million um, dumbed down, half lobotomized slaves to service the the elite families that, uh, if they're if you're allowed to be born, uh, reducing the world population through vaccines. This statement by Bill Gates was not ma not made without with any hesitation, stuttering, or other indication that it might have been a mistake. He's telling you, basically, the fact. It appears to have been a deliberate, calculated part of a well developed and coherent presentation. So what, is, what does this mean when Bill Gates says if we do a really great job on new vaccines, we could lower world population by 10 or 15%? Clearly, this statement implies that vaccines are a method of population reduction. So is healthcare, which all natural news readers already know to be more of a sick care system, that actually harms more people than it helps? So there you are, Dr. Carley. Um, Bill Gates of Planned Parenthood is um, uh, a eugenics organization, is on record coming out and saying we need to reduce the population and we're going to do it with vaccines. So there you are. It's, it's yes, well, I, so I would just open like to and blatant if I now, could isn't it? On Bill Gates, first of all, um, it's actually over a billion dollars that he's donated um, for vaccine production. Uh, and he was actually on Comedy Central um, on January 31st yep. on the Jon Stewart show Seen it. Yep. talking about how he's uh, sending all this oral polio vaccine uh, to third world countries. And the reason they stopped the oral polio vaccine here in the States is because for at least 15 years, it's the only way you could get polio is from the oral polio vaccine. Yeah. So that's first of all. But I would also like to, to state that I think this is a massive... Um, you know, decrease in the actual numbers because let's not forget, uh, I go farther than Mike Adams. I say it's, it's not um, 
just uh, basically, you know, not health care, but it's actually disease creation uh, because yeah. all vaccines cause autoimmune disease, seizures, cancer, and genetic damage. And um, I actually have a book published by NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, called Immunological Adjuvants and Vaccines. Um, this was published back in the 80s. They have a whole chapter in there about how they're putting uh, uh, B, uh, HCG, beta HCG, which is a chorionic uh, gonadotropin that women create uh, when they become pregnant. They, they put those into vaccines and gave them to women in many countries without their knowledge or consent. So what happens is you develop antibodies against that hormone. So when you get pregnant, you abort your baby. And this yep. has been going on for years. I mean, why do you think the uh, fertility rates are, are plummeting? 75% uh, so fast. now. Yeah. They're down 75% across yeah. the Western world. As a matter world. of fact, they tell more truth in the movies than they do on, you know, mainstream television. Uh, watch the movie Children of God. You know, when it gets to the point where there's I've one woman it, yeah. on the planet that's able to have a child. I mean, Eve, that's their yeah. goal, apparently, because they're also making all their robotic technology Eventually, they won't even need slave work units. They'll have artificial intelligence to, you know, take care of business. Yeah. Well, the brain chips are, are on the agenda. The um, RFID chips under our skin and our hand and arms. And it's, it's a bit like the Bible, really, that mentions uh, no man will be able to buy, sell or barter without the mark. Well, that's the mark. Personally, I don't believe in the devil. It's just a control mechanism that's worked very well for the last couple of thousand years. But uh, we're following their, uh, we're, we're in this script, like a Hollywood script that they have. Mm -hmm. And the brain chips are coming and people in Germany in, in a club, you, if you have the chip, you can, you can go walk right through without being bothered by security or having the inconvenience of paying for a couple of seconds. And you get drinks promotions and things. So there's plenty of dummies out there that are taking um, the experiments you know? Well, it's not just it's not just the RFID chips. I want to say, um, which I'm convinced uh, they're now putting in vaccines, like for the swine flu. They can put them right in the needle. Yeah. And when I figured out that must be going on, mm. uh, I have a client who actually owned a surgical supply store. He used to sell uh, syringes and needles and such. He's since um, sold the store because he has a conscience. But somebody from the feds called him up and said, when this new vaccine comes out, there's only one company that's going to be allowed to, to supply the syringes and needles to deliver it. Now, why would they do that? The only answer I can come mm. up with is because there's something in the needle. But what I wanted to bring up is it's not just the RFID chip, which you can see it online. It's, it's uh, smaller than a grain of rice. But yeah. they now have nanoparticles, yeah. self-assembling nanoparticles, and I'm convinced this has a lot to do with Morgellons, uh, yeah. that they're also injecting in syringes, especially in vaccines as well. So they're mm. getting their technology even more and more micro. Well, some of the chemtrails um, have been studied. Some of the, um, some of the samples have found uh, nano particles and uh, nano type robotic machines now if you're listening to this kind of information for the first time this is the point where you're probably thinking oh my god conspiracy nuts sci-fi sci conspiracy nuts but if you look at um strange days at dark skies website there's lots of photographic evidence of, from under the microscope of these nano mm, nano robotic machines and more gelons is, is a very nasty kind of skin problem disease that develops after, uh, particularly after heavy spraying of chemical trails, which is megatons of aluminium dioxide, uh, aluminium oxide, strontium, barium, bacteria. So, if they're putting it, if they may be putting it in the vaccines, then they're probably doing it uh, from the air too. What do you think about that? Oh, definitely. There's no question they're doing it right. um, from the air. Um, if, if you're not used to this information, there's another excellent. DVD you can watch for free online called What in the World Are They Spraying? Um, yes. he t this is a G. Edward Griffith. He, he tones it yes. down a lot more where people can handle the information. Mm. One of the best parts of it is at the end, um, one of his uh, producers, they go into the District of Criminals and they approach many of the, you know, quote-unquote public servants in Congress and 
they show you these people running away. I mean, literally running away from them yeah. when they start asking questions, you know, closing their doors and hiding. So obviously they all know about it. But as I always say, it's always the big picture. I think that they have multiple delivery systems and that by combining delivery systems, things can happen, you know, in a much bigger way. So, yeah, vaccines, I'm sure, are involved. Uh, chemtrails, it's obvious. I mean, you know, I've seen the same things you've seen. Yeah. And uh, why are they doing this? I mean, they've been doing it for a decade. Yeah. And they don't tell us why. Of course, we know why. It's part of the depopulation. And as far as anybody, you know, that's why they went after me saying I have a delusion of conspiracy. Uh, I always tell people, don't believe anything I say. Check things out for yourself because we've all been lied to about everything. Uh, but do your homework. The answers are out there. And, of course, once you start checking these things out, you're going to get a little scared. But once you realize that um, this is serious, uh, as Patrick said, uh, what it says in the Georgia Guidestones, they actually put it in stone. They want to decrease the population by 90 percent, and they're they're doing it. So people yeah. have to lose their fear and just start saying no. It's a war on humanity. I've noticed. Yes, um, it is. I've noticed actually, um, rather ironically, that um, delusions of conspiracy um, abbreviates to DOC. D O C. Okay. <laughs> Just Interesting. That. Well, if you know. I could quickly mention, please, yeah. um, I can document everything I say. Yes, I, I, I have been studying this for 15 years, and I'm sure Patrick has multiple documents as well. Well, I will say, um, to get back to basics, um, parents that um, are considering uh, or being uh, intimidated by their GPs to have this vaccine or their schools and their medical centres intimidating a lot of, a lot of parents, and... Um, they're, they're rightfully anxious about what the, the, the possible health effects. So by listening to this show, hopefully this will make your mind up not to have your children vaccinated. It's very, very important because we need healthy people to fight this this tyranny. And in the future, yeah. with the chemtrails that are spraying and, and the vaccines and the fluoride and, and the toxins in the food, we're going to be too weak to resist the new world order soon. Exactly. And, and what I would like to suggest to people is <clears throat> instead of viewing your white coat, as I so disrespectfully call these, these uh, people without a conscience in my profession, instead of viewing them as like your child's friend and, you know, doctor, blah, 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 you have to start viewing them as predators. As a matter of fact, when the Supreme Court case was uh, published in my local Charlotte Observer, North Carolina paper uh, here yesterday. They actually quoted the American Academy of Pediatrics, which represents more than 60,000 doctors, praising the decision that, and saying that childhood vaccines are among the greatest medical breakthroughs of the last century, said Dr. Marion Burton, the group's president. And today's Supreme Court decision protects children by strengthening not the children's right but our national immunization system. So, so that's who the pediatricians work for, folks. They work for Big Pharma, and they couldn't have said it more clear in this article. You are listening to the Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio with my guest, Dr. Rebecca Carley, MD, and we'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to the Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio. I'm delighted to have with me today our guest, Dr. Rebecca Carley, MD, a world-renowned expert on vaccines. Uh, welcome back, Doctor. Thank you so much, Patrick. I was just looking at this website here, the truth about Gardasil. Um, Gardasil is the HPV vaccine. Uh, touted to fight cervical cancer, and I believe mm -hmm. its I believe its sister uh, drug in Europe here is Savarex. Yes. Um, what they're not telling you, the site says, is that thousands of girls are having adverse reactions to the HPV vaccines. Some have even died. At last count, at least 89 lives have been lost, and I've got a list of the injuries that the girls have suffered from the just in the UK in England alone. 
So can you give us um, a good idea um, what the dangers are of this Savarix vaccine, um, stroke Gardasil? Yes, um, this is one of the most evil vaccines, in my opinion, they've ever come up with. Not only is this going to massively skyrocket infertility, but it's going to cause a massive outbreak of cervical cancer. Uh, as a matter of fact, I suspect that the HPV virus itself is one of those emerging viruses from the, you know, 1300 biowarfare labs just here in the States alone. But in fact, the first thing I always tell people to check things out for themselves is go on even, you know, the, the pharmaceutical company's own websites and read for yourself uh, the side effects of any vaccine, but especially this one, because... If you go under the section where they talk about carcinogenesis, carcinogenesis is the formation of cancer. What is the claim for this vaccine? It's going to protect you from cancer. And guess what? They've never tested it to see if it causes cancer. Right. So obviously they know. Now, two, com two um, personal situations that I've had with my clients. Um, there was a young woman in uh, Long Island, New York, they got the Gardasil vaccine um, right when she first got pregnant, didn't know she was pregnant. Uh, her child was born with brain cancer and didn't even live more than a couple of months. Um, <clears throat> the second one is I had a, a young girl in Washington State who got the hepatitis B vaccine on the same day she got the Gardasil and ended up in fulminant liver failure. And what the doctors diagnosed her with was non-A, non-B, non-C, non-D, non-E hepatitis. We're up to E now. So yeah. I'm sure that they, um, they got some of that virus from her. They've named it F, and now that's another one that's going to be out there. They're going to be injecting in, into people. A very uh, important article I would like to mention, though, um, if you go to JCN, that stands for Journal of Child Neurology. Yeah. Dot sage s a g e pub. Dot com, and you look up um, <clears throat> this original article. It's volume twenty five, number three, March two thousand ten. Uh, can I just stop you there the for a second, uh, Doctor? Uh, if you could just repeat that, please. I'll write it down and make sure. a note of the link and leave it in the website in the YouTube. Okay. J C N. J C N stands for Journal of Child Neurology. Yeah. Dot sage S A S A G E pub dot yeah. com. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank Go you. To thank the, you. The volume twenty five edition, March two thousand ten. Volume twenty five, March two thousand ten. Okay. Right. This is an this is an article in a mainstream medical journal. This is the title. A sixteen year old girl with bilateral visual loss and left hemiparesis following an immunization against human papilloma virus. What this means is that this young girl got the HPV vaccine. Within 10 days, she was blind and paralyzed. And they talk in this article, they, they basically say it's from the vaccine. They yeah. talk about demyelination, which is one of the big things that I always speak about in terms of the neurological vaccine-induced diseases. Uh, somebody had sent me this, and I was wowed that this actually ever got published. We'll see how long the doctors that wrote this, you know, keep their medical license. But information is all over the Internet about these uh, very dangerous vaccines, and now they want to give it to boys as well. Well, um, on the Natural News site, experts pushing HPV vaccines told to omit death toll. Medical experts pushing HPV vaccines told what not to say about them, including their death toll. This is from Ethan A. Huff, Natural News, February the 19th, 2011. It's a very recent article. Two British doctors, two British doctors, recently the centre of the New World Order, recently wrote a piece in the BBC urging the UK National Health Service, uh, authority now, NHS, to switch from Merck's Savarix human papillomavirus HPV vaccine to GlaxoSmithKline's uh, Gardasil HP vaccine in its mass vaccination program for young girls and the two experts inverted commas admit that they only say publicly what helps the vaccine to be well received by the public we as consultants in sexual health 
have been told to say nothing publicly that would damage the current vaccine campaign, they wrote in their piece. Doctors Colm O'Mahony and Steve Taylor insist that because Gardasil allegedly protects against genital warts as well as HPV, it is superior to Cervarix, which NHS currently administers to young girls. As long as Gardasil is the same price or cheaper than Cervarix, then NHS should use it, wrote the doctors. And if it is more expensive, then Cervarix is the next best option, they say. So they're told to shut up about the bad things that happen to people when they die, for example. Yes. Well, this is this is exactly um, the same kind of thing as in this uh, Supreme Court case where the American Academy of Pediatrics is, is praising the decision because they're saying it protects children by, by strengthening the national immunization program. You see, once you realize, folks, and this is something... It was one of my darkest nights of my soul because I went to medical school because I wanted to help people. When I realized that almost the entire field of internal medicine is all vaccine-induced diseases. They start the vaccines as soon as you breathe your first breath at this point. They continue to vaccinate you. You get arthritis, autism, cancer, renal failure. The list is endless. And then you go to the white coats and they give you drugs that cure nothing but give side effects. The entire medical system is based on these things. And yeah. that is the reason why they're becoming so obvious to protect them. You know, it's just amazing that they would come out and admit such a thing as you just stated. But of course, these minions believe they've got all their ducks in a row. There's nothing that the sheep are going to be able to do. And so now they're actually being so bold and arrogant as to put it right in our face. And this is pure evil. These people don't have a conscience, obviously. These are the criminals that we're being asked to trust. Now, um, one thing I did want to go into is um, talking about the, the, uh, the mind control that's apparent and um, in the mass media system. Um, we grew up here watching uh, medical hospital programs, and we're being we've been trained to uh, trust our doctors like gods. It's always the best catch for a woman on Friends or something. Oh, he's a doctor, you know. And we've we've been trained for many many years to accept, um, uh, without question, the the doctor's um, advice. So do you, do you see the media playing a, a role in the, the programming of people in films, movies, adverts, soaps, etc.? Totally. Um, as a matter of fact, this is one of their major mind control uh, techniques, which, of course, they add fluoride to the mix, and there's many other things. Um, here in the States, the entire Congress became activated and pushed everybody here to get HDTV, uh, High definition television, and the reason they did that really bad is because for you. Yep. they're able to put silent sound technology frequencies out there. They are actually able to do uh, audio visual entrainment. Uh, so all of these things that you're saying are in fact true, and then, of course they do this with the justice system as well. Uh, it cracks me up because uh, we have uh, the show here uh, that's very popular and um, about the justice system, and now they have the U.K. version uh, of this uh, same show where, you know, justice always prevails, and the only difference is the judges and attorneys are wearing the white wigs. Um, but, but they're just propagating this, these lies. I mean, the, the judicial system is just as corrupt as the medical system. Yes. As a matter of fact, that's how they protect the bad doctors who are killing people. And anybody that steps out of the box, you know, Andrew Wakefield, uh, he didn't even uh, say all vaccines yes. are bad. Uh, he said he's not against vaccines. And I, I have a problem with doctors who do that because, in my view, that's cowardice. Um, you have to talk about genocide because that's what it is. Uh, but Dr. Even, Andrew, Dr. Andrew with, Wakefield is the chap that was struck off. The British uh, Medical Council struck him off. Is that the chap that's been on the Alex Jones show yes. a couple of times? Yes. So he's mm -hmm. not, he's, he's not, um, he doesn't go the whole way in saying that it is deliberate? No, he doesn't. As a matter of fact, he, he says publicly he's not against vaccines. I guess he did that because he was hoping that would save him uh, from losing his medical license. And, of course, that didn't work. 
uh, I had met him in 1999 at a conference in Florida right. and informed him that autism is actually something called subacute sclerosing panencephalitis caused by the measles virus. They just changed the name to hide the fact uh, that that's what it was. Mm. Um, he did the study of some children that he found measles virus in their gut. Yep. Of course, it's not the measles virus in their gut that's causing their encephalitis. It's the measles virus in their brain. Uh, they don't do brain biopsies for children with autism. Mm. But he was too afraid to go to that level and then continue to find out, yes, Bill Gates is planning on you know, spending, well, he's already spent over a billion dollars. Uh, Warren Buffett is in on it now, too. Um, and, and Bill Gates had mentioned the Rotary Club has also donated a, a billion of dollars. Uh, there's many of these Masonic-type organizations getting in on the program. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you have to go to that level. And as far as I know, myself and the co-host of my radio show, Patrick Jordan, uh, are the only ones that do. As a matter of fact, I just want to mention his website, VaccineFraud.com. Sure. VaccineFraud.com. He has written three books. And um, one of the books, uh, the most amazing one, in my opinion, is entitled History and Pathology of Vaccination. And actually what he did was republish a book by that same name, uh, published by Edgar March Cruikshank in 1889, yeah. over two centuries ago. They've known all this time oh, yes. what the vaccines are doing. It's a very old plan. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, just to be, just for the record, uh, Dr. Andrew Wakefield was um, intimidated under a whole barrage of um, attacks because he came out and spoke about the dangers of vaccines. Okay, he didn't, he doesn't go all the way, and perhaps he's getting a rude awakening. We all have to wake up somehow, but um, we right. do, we do support his efforts absolutely. Still, well, let me just say, I mean, uh, nobody's been attacked more than me. They, they kidnapped my only child. He's been ritually abused for. Uh, a decade now. Yes. Um, the, the point is, is that if people would lose their fear and come together, yes. um, the ones who actually know what's going on, we could put a stop to this. Um, in my opinion, the reason they went after him to the degree they did is because he did get something published in a mainstream medical journal. And that's why I said when I saw this article from the uh, Journal of Child Neurology, w we'll see how long these doctors last, because that's what people have to realize. When a mm. doctor stands up for the truth, yep. they, they've killed many doctors. They go after us in so many ways, yeah. and the people really need to stand with the doctors who are trying to do the right thing. Yep. I mean, presumably the reason people get into medicine in the first place is to help people um, stay healthy and, and keep them alive. But the so I think that's changing now. I think it's kind of obvious that you can make big bucks killing people. Mm -hmm. See, there's no way. Uh, it's too obvious now. It, it attracts no way the psychopaths, that doesn't it? cannot see this mm. once they start, quote-unquote, practicing. So I think, you know, they're finding the doctors, um, especially in, in, you know, your Harvards, your, your quote-unquote, Ivy League uh, colleges and such. They're looking for the people, and, and they have ways of testing them academically yeah. to find the ones who don't have a conscience who will break the rules yeah and those are yeah. the people they're letting into school now that's my opinion yeah it, this kind of uh, trade in death attracts the young psychopaths with um uh, power yearnings you know the same with the police force and um politicians especially actually they're they're, they're the most obvious uh, psychopaths any government agency same with child protective services the huh. child protective services here in the states they're now uh, they don't go after the really bad parents. You know, they let them keep the children and damage them because they know they'll enter the justice system and fuel the fire for that and, and psychiatric institutions and such. The really good parents who are not vaccinating and things of that nature, uh, those are the ones that are going after stealing their children, making billions of dollars when you total up all the money made in all the states here uh, for kidnapping children, putting them in foster care, and then adopting them out. So they are creating uh, an entire generation. And when you just think of these poor children, between being vaccinated and fluoridated and ripped out of their good family's arms and put in who knows what kind of homes where 
they're using them for pornography and all kinds of things have been revealed over the years. Yeah. Um, is it any wonder that our children are really screwed up? Getting back to, um, I mean, it is an absolutely corrupt system. It is a, um, a paedophile ring. Um, the CPS is basically a, part, a paedophile ring. And the paedophile problem goes directly to the British cabinet. Some of the politicians are paedophiles themselves. Gordon Brown, our ex-Prime Minister here in England, is on record. It's well known in intelligence circles, in um, Israeli, American and English intelligence services that he is a practising paedophile, and they're protected. The case of Holly Grieg in um, Scotland, she was a Down syndrome child, and uh, these politicians and CEOs... They prefer Down syndrome children. They prefer to have sex with Down, uh, Down, Down syndrome children because their word isn't admissible in a court of law. But when or she, she she's children. been she's been very she's or been autistic yeah children. or they're, autistic they're really raping. really yeah. right and uh, mm -hmm. she she was actually encouraged to come out and speak. Um, she told of the ritual abuse of her father and his. Uh, people that he used to bring round to his house were judges, social workers, doctors, lawyers, and they're protected. The High Sheriff of Scotland would not touch this case with a barge pole. It's totally corrupt. Well, my own son has been going through this for 10 years. Uh, there's nothing I could do to save him. So this is um, my my most difficult situation that I have to live with every day. Yeah. And this caused me to investigate all this. How is this happening? Of course, all of the top-level politicians in this country are pedophiles as well. Yeah. Uh, there's two excellent books. Uh, my favorite is uh, The Franklin Cover-Up by uh, ex-Nebraska uh, State Senator John DeCamp, where he documents all this. I mean, George Bush, you know, all of these top-level... Kissinger. Men. Yep, Henry Kissinger. Yeah. Like Dick Cheney. Yeah, the whole bunch. And see, this is another thing that I'm sure some of the newbies that are listening are going to say, how could this be? Well, yeah. it is. I mean, and it's been documented. Uh, check out the White March in Belgium. I don't remember the name of the predator in that case, um, where they were. He had actually killed a number of children, um, but they tried not to prosecute him. Tried to get away without prosecuting him, because uh, he was going to give up the names of the people he was procuring the children for. And it was only after a massive outcry from the citizenry. They took to the streets. They were hosing down the um, uh, courts with uh, fire hoses. They were all carrying white balloons. And after that happened, a number of the people trying to cover it up actually committed suicide and different things of that nature. That's why I'm saying I, I do not promote violence. I'm a very peaceful person. Same here. Person, and they have, they have such weapons that we can't even conceive of anyways. You know, your little six-shooter is not going to do too much. But if the people just stand up as a gigantic mass and say, we know what you're doing, we see what you're doing, much less you're making us pay for it. You know, how far are people going to let this go? It's just mind boggling. Well, this is why these kind of radio stations are really important. We can do this as long as we can until Obama's Internet kill switch kicks in. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be very much like the Chinese model for the Internet soon so we can do this but when they stop the radio shows and stop our websites and um shut us down we'll just come back tenfold with um private radio stations shortwave radio stations ham radio posters our own newspapers pamphlets nothing will stop the information getting out there so this is a crucial uh time to get it get the information out there on this internet yes and, and, and like I said, people, um, don't be afraid, okay? People uh, will often say to me, well, you know, I, I don't know, they might be tapping my phone or, you know. Monitoring. Every phone is tapped. Yeah, they're doing all these things. So what? I mean, this is the way it is. So are you going to allow them to continue to do all these purely evil and genocidal acts? Um, Nothing to lose. Afraid? I... Nothing to lose. If the medical establishment and the New World Order is seeking to reduce the world's population by 90%, which includes anyone listening now, unless they're an elite banker, then you've nothing to lose, nothing to fear in standing together. 
I would encourage everyone to do their own radio station for their local area on the internet. If you live in uh, Kansas or something, have uh, Kansas FM or for your local area, for your, for your town, for your village. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm presently now on two mainstream uh, radio stations, one in upstate New York and one in Buffalo, um, which amazes me that, you know, my information is being allowed out there and I don't really leave any stuff out. Right. And apparently the people that even own some of these types of stations are starting to say, uh-oh, we're in trouble. Mm. So they're allowing the information to go out through their stations, and this is a very good sign. It is encouraging, but um, getting back to the the um, the HPV vaccine, um, this article mentions that we were talking about the corruption of the, the doctors and how they're paid off, but what is missing from their recommendations is the fact that Dr. O'Mahony has been on the advisory boards of both GlaxoSmithKline and Merck and has received lecture fees for his services. This clear conflict of interest may be the precise reason why no mention is made in the BBC piece about the countless thousands of young girls that have become debilitated or died from Cervarix and Gardasil. The same as Dr. Paul Offit, this mouthpiece for big pharma's vaccine programs. Right. They, they quote him in every article that I've seen published about vaccines and as it even stated in this USA Today article he developed the rotavirus vaccine what they didn't say is that it was taken off the market because it had hurt so many children yeah can you spell conflict of interest uh, the same thing with all these government regulate regulatory agencies like the FDA here in the states um, they're basically paid off by big pharma they tell big pharma you know, what they want to tell them on any drug, not just vaccines. And then Big Pharma, you know, stamps it, approval, adds it to the vaccine schedule. And now they've gone as far as to saying, when your children are damaged or killed, there's nothing you can do. I mean, I, that, I don't know how much worse it can get than that. Well, Ashley Cave, uh, currently in Alderhey Children's Hospital, uh, Ashley is out of hospital, attending school on a part-time basis, but still has to make use of a wheelchair. She is not a very well girl. The date of admission, uh, 24th of October 2008 to Alderhey. Uh, Ashley had her vaccine of Savarix, first dose only, at a secondary school. They're giving it to people in schools on 15th of October 2008 and became ill within half an hour with symptoms of intense head pain, which made her scream out. In the next few days, she felt light-headed and dizzy. She then developed pain in her legs. She collapsed five times in the next 48 hours. She went with family to London to visit friend, friends, but worsened and was admitted into Frimley Park Hospital, Surrey, for two days. And the discharge note said vertigo and generalised myalgia, probably due to vaccination, Dr J Fisher. So anyway, she, she gradually deteriorated with bad leg pain and could no longer walk. Admitted again, uh, where she remained, pains in arms and legs, crawling on all fours to the toilet, not able to stand or walk, pain severe. Um, but Dr Curran of Alderhey Hospital stated that, in his opinion, this was not caused by the vaccine. Is currently having right. physiotherapy, hydrotherapy. Um, Ashley's condition today, she's still in Alderhey, incontinent, um, catheter, bladder control program. Um, she's making slow progress back, but um, her mother is well, under understandably angry at the way her daughter has been treated by the NHS. Well, what I would ask people, because I don't have time to research all these cases, um, if you know of, of, of situations like this, please tell them to go to my reversing vaccine induced diseases right, yeah. dot com website. Because the good news is these <clears throat> things can be reversed. I reversed over 4,000 cases of autism. <clears throat> I have people and pets Excuse with me. every condition you can imagine. Yeah. These things can be reversed with natural therapies. And, of course, that's why I'm especially dangerous uh, because I'm proving this. I have another website, drcarly.com, where I talk about genocide and weapons of mass destruction. The other site is my Dr. Carly Light site, as I call it. Um, but if you go to the drcarly.com website, 
you will see I, I've had a $10,000 reward uh, for almost five years now for any vaccine promoter to come on any show and debate me on these issues. And you've still got the money. money. And you've still got the money. I've still got the money. I, I should have made it a million dollars, but then people would have thought I was a millionaire, which, of course, right. they almost destroyed me uh, trying to save my son in court for seven years. But the principle is that nobody will debate me. Nobody. Uh, there's only been a few um, shows that I've done out of Jamaica, um, this outstanding uh, a journalist in Jamaica that has a radio show there. He's, he's coerced a couple of their, their Jamaica, you know, uh, government officials on vaccines to come on with me. Um, a couple of those shows are on my website, and it's hilarious. You know, you hear them, they pretend they can't hear me when I ask them hard questions. You know, they lose the phone contact, they have to call back in. You know, it's just so obvious. You are listening to The Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio with our guest, Dr. Rebecca Carley, MD. We're just going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio. I am your host, Patrick Lynch, and we have our guest, Dr. Rebecca Carley, MD, a world-renowned expert on the dangers of vaccines. And I'd recommend her YouTube video also. It was a life changer for me. It covered everything, and everything fell into place when I heard that. There was the Weapons of Mass Deception uh, video on YouTube. It's, it's a long video, but it, it, it's a life changer. So I want to thank you for that personally, Doctor. Well, this is why I'm here, to, uh, to try to change things. And we're each doing our part, and every person has their part. And not everybody's going to get their own internet radio shows like Patrick and I have done. But whatever you can do to spread the word to your family, friends, and contacts. Um, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink. If they're not, you know, open to the information, at least you know you tried. But uh, we need to get this information out in a viral fashion. Absolutely. Um would you, would you uh, consider doing a similar video again, a kind of updated kind of lecture or, or just a, a speaking into the camera? Because the, the sound quality was, was quite poor, whoever recorded it at that lecture. And um, if you could do something updated um, to bring it up to date, uh, have you considered okay, that? Okay, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, I have so many things going on right yeah. now. Yeah. I have two books that I'm working on. Yeah. I do consults for people all over the world. There's not enough hours in the day. Um, but I do appreciate that. As a matter of fact, at some point, I should probably just make a professional video and offer it for sale because obviously I have to live as well and um, offer it to people that, you know, and they, they could copy it. You know, I, I have no problem with people copying my information and, um, you know, sending it out to others. And, uh, and not to mention the fact that um, that, that video is actually three, uh, three years old. That was a conference I gave in Chicago in 2008. I have so much more evidence of crimes against humanity now than I even right. did then. Will you um, be lecturing in Europe at all at any stage? Well, the problem I have at this point is these scanners they've put into the airports mm -hmm. um, can actually unravel your DNA. Yes. Um, they're going to cause all kinds of cancer, uh, not to mention the fact that I'm sure I'm on some kind of watch list. Not that I have any fear, but, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be stupid about it. Uh, what I would rather do is, um, you know, do something that I can offer to people. Uh, yeah. It's amazing to me that they haven't taken David Icke out yet because he travels all over. But I did hear recently that he's been kind of ill. Um, it's just, uh, you know, not a good thing. They're doing so many things. Those scanners, I mean, when you think about it, why did they start those scanners? Oh, we had the Christmas Day bomber, okay, which I'm sure was some kind of MK Ultra mind control slave in the first place. Oh, the FBI, and, uh, the FBI are on record. The FBI are on record as saying that yes, it was our, it was our man. Yeah, and so basically, you know, they they was, weren't able to cause the Christmas Day trauma, but it gave them an excuse to install those scanners. And people have to ask themselves, wait a minute. They had those things all rolled mm -hmm. up and ready to mm -hmm. go. They started delivery at airports immediately. How did they know that was going to happen? 
you know, these are the kinds of things that people have to ask themselves. Uh, I don't talk about conspiracy theories. I talk about conspiracy realities and obvious, you know, situations. You know, so so this is what's going on. And every time they have one of their false flag events, something else happens, the Patriot Act, whatever the case may be. You know, we had the shoe guy on the airplane, and now everybody has to take off their shoes and walk through these disgustingly dirty airports with well, that's, their that's, feet. Well, that's de dehumanization. We're being, you, you're told to take your shoes off and your jackets and things to dehumanize you, to, to train you to be slaved... Uh, enslaved slave workers. and yeah mm -hmm. it's just slave brainwashing so you do what you're told right. it, we're, we're, this a phase of the agenda the new world order we're entering into a now is where we're expected to bow down and respect authority and just do whatever you're told no matter how unethical it may seem to you that's what right. the right. training is all about Lick and, the they're, and they're being and they're being rolled and, out and, at and supermarkets and and stadiums and other places pardon me uh, these scanning machines the um, they have at the airports are being rolled out at supermarkets as plans to roll them out at stadiums as well too. So I, I'm pretty sure they had uh, they had it at the Super Bowl within the last few weeks, which is of course another way that there there were 111 million people here in the states watching the Super Bowl, and I was thinking to myself, well, those people are gone. I mean, this mm -hmm. is all they have to do with everything going on is watch the Super Bowl, but. And by the way, yes, there's did. by the way, there's no law requiring you that you have to go through that scanner. There is an opt out, and uh, uh, they intimidate you and say, "Oh yeah, we got an opt out," and they make a big fuss and everything. But there's no law requiring you to walk through those scanners. You don't have to walk through them. But I have heard of many people that tried to opt out, and it, it just became such a hassle. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you can either be scanned or you can be groped. So those right. are your options. Right. And so many people, like you said, they unfortunately just submit. And this is part of the training for that uh, sheeple mentality. You know, lick yeah. the boots of your master. If you lick the boots of your master uh, enough, you know, then you're just hoping, oh, maybe they'll leave me alone. No, they're not going to leave you alone. They're not leaving you alone. They're doing everything they're doing. What air are you going to breathe? I mean, are we going to get to the point with all these chemtrails and the pollution where people are going to have to wear oxygen tanks, you know, uh, how bad is it going to get? Right. What I'm going to try and do is get back to the basics of what the ingredients are of these vaccines. We know there's thimerosal, we know there's mercury, we know that these things are linked to the Guillain-Barre uh, stroke Gulf War syndrome. We know that there's various uh, red blood cells and aborted fetus in some cases. Can you can you explain to us um, the the problem with mercury well in my opinion mercury is a distraction not that mercury is not a toxic poison for the nervous system um, it, it does cause along with aluminum Alzheimer's disease uh, but it has nothing to do with autism autism is as I said before a subacute sclerosing panencephalitis but you know yeah, they we, have we, all we did these make that, limits we did make that clear in our last interview so I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that Okay, they have all these limits. You know, they're telling pregnant women not to eat fish that are contaminated with mercury. But, hey, it's okay to get a flu vaccine. Uh, I mean, the flu vaccines still have mercury in them. So what's up with that? Um, so, so the main constituents of mercury, uh, the main constituents of um, most vaccines is mercury and thimerosal, would you say? Oh, there's all kinds of uh, constituents of vaccines. Uh, and as a matter of fact, there's many websites that you can check out uh, yeah. for this information. Um, I suggest that all of you go to uh, reversingvaccineinducedDiseases.com yeah. and read my physician's warranty of vaccine safety. This is a document that you can download and, and take it to your pediatrician. And basically what it says is that, you know, um, the, the pediatrician has reviewed uh, all of the different ingredients in vaccines and uh, things of that nature, and you make them sign that they guarantee you that this is not going to cause damage to your child. Okay, and let's course, have that. Uh, Sorry, Dr. Carly, let's have that website again, Reversing the Dangers of Vaccines. No, ReversingVaccineInducedDiseases.com. Vaccine uh, yep, yeah. got it. Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm checking it out right now. I think it's on... 
the vaccine uh, the media page I am aware of it and I've looked at it myself it's, it's okay, excellent yeah. I would recommend it but I just wanted to, to make it clear to people reversing vaccine induced diseases dot com okay right and if you go to the media page and click on the physician's warranty of vaccine safety uh, and I do not take credit for this I, I don't even know who <clears> made this it went viral on the internet but it is fantastic because it's like I said a document you can take to your pediatrician and these are some of the things that are mentioned uh, that you're asking the pediatrician to sign that they are aware that vaccines typically contain many of the following. Uh, aluminum hydroxide, uh, and let me say that in that same NATO book I discussed earlier, they actually admit that it's the aluminum in vaccines that causes the production of IgE antibodies. Those are the antibodies of allergy and anaphylactic shock. Uh, and like I said, in this book, they're admitting these things. Um, calf bovine serum, and of course, you have the risk of uh, bovine spongiform encephalitis with that. Uh, formaldehyde, which is what they use to pickle dead people. Yep. Uh, human diploid cells, which are aborted fetuses. And of course, um, as I explain in some of the documents on my drcarly.com site, uh, it, it is the tissue culture that they use to make the vaccines and grow the viruses uh, that's injected into you, uh, when you develop uh, a reaction against those cells, that's what's giving you all these autoimmune diseases. And as a matter of fact, if you go to the pet page of my reversing vaccine induced diseases.com site, you can actually click on the package insert for the rabies vaccine, and they actually admit right in the package insert that the tissue culture used to make the rabies uh, virus grow causes autoimmune disease in the pets. That's the only um, package insert I've ever seen that admitted that, but uh, of course it's true for all the vaccines. Well, it does say uh, uh, it does say on the swine flu insert, doesn't it, that it um, contains mercury may cause sterilization, right? Yeah, well, I, I'm talking about the um, autoimmune aspects of the tissue culture used to make the vaccines. But yes, the flu yeah. vaccines still all have mercury, correct? Right. And we have neomycin. Uh, we have uh, all kinds of other antibiotics as well. Um, there's even evidence that they're putting aspartame in vaccines, which huh. is extremely bizarre. Brain damage. Why do you care if your vaccine has, you know, how it tastes? Well, we know about aspartame. Dr. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, Donald Rumsfeld was a head of the CEO of aspartame at the time, I believe, and he yes. he knew very well the scientific studies were coming back and saying this aspartame stuff it's killing and giving brain damage to the monkeys we've tested it on, and once Reagan got in power, he um he sacked the man that was holding it up and got his own fellas in there, and um, aspartame went on the market knowing full well that it causes brain damage for people. Can you tell us something? See, that's that, that's a case of universal justice because old <clears throat> Ronnie boy, you know, died with his brain totally, you know, discombobulated. So I'm sure <laughs> that <clears throat> some of the aspartame in the uh, jelly beans he was eating perhaps <laughs> helped that along. But yes, in those regards, I would refer the listeners to a, a very important documentary um, called Sweet Misery. You yes. can watch it on the internet yes uh, it gives you the whole history of aspartame which is I've another link in the assaults to our bodies yep i've seen that a couple of times it is excellent i would recommend that to sweet misery that's the documentary i'm just making notes here and I'll, I'll leave them on the youtube channels and and the chat box and along the website too excellent okay um so any parents that that are listening um, you've heard um, a world-renowned, recognized expert on vaccines, the problems associated with them, the reasons behind their use, their implementation into the medical system, and the effects of these vaccines. So I would appeal to any parents now that are considering having a vaccine uh, given to their children or themselves at any point in their lives, do not take the vaccines. Now well, you... and if I could, I would just like to give a shout out for the pets as well. Sure. Uh, once again, on my website, if you go to the pet page, there's a most outstanding article called Science of Vaccine Damage. It's out of the UK, 
It has 19 scientific references from non-pharma funded veterinarians that have all concluded the exact same thing I've been saying for 15 years, that vaccines cause a corruption in the immune system that leads to all autoimmune disease, non-traumatic seizures, cancer, and genetic damage in people and in pets. So you have so much information and, you know, take this to your veterinarian or, or to your pediatrician or to your own white coat and ask them to please uh, show you information proving that this information is incorrect. It's not just me. Uh, there's many people with a conscience. Uh, another very important book entitled Vaccination, Social Violence, and Criminality uh, that you can get from thinktwice.com, another excellent website that has a number of vaccine books on it. Um, Dr. Harris Coulter wrote this book, uh, highly referenced, talking about how many of the children that are exhibiting violent and criminal behavior are doing so due to vaccination damage. I mean, there is no end to this. And yeah. as a matter of fact, the veterinarian that I've done many radio shows with, uh, Dr. Patricia Jordan, uh, she was the one that, that taught me that many of the pets, especially the dogs that are becoming vicious and attacking their own masters yeah. or children in the home, they're rabid because they got injected with rabies. Yeah. That's how bad it is. That's right, yeah. So the bottom line, what people have to face is that um, our bodies work just fine if they're left alone. Right. Our immune system is the constitution of our body. It knows how to, you know, uh, attack cancer cells and, and basically get rid of bacteria and viruses and things of that nature um, until you start assaulting it with toxic poison and especially corrupting it with vaccine. So we have to get back to natural things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like herbs that, that Patty talks about, and, and colloidal silver is another thing I teach my clients about. Colloidal silver kills 650 bacteria and viruses, pretty much everything it's <clears> ever <throat> been tested on. Um, yeah. So even HIV. So you can reverse these things with natural therapies, and that's why, for example, in the UK, uh, the NHS is, is viciously attacking homeopathy at this point. Yes. Uh, which which is really amazing to me. I mean, even the royal family uses homeopathy, so what's up with that? And what about um, uh, injections in general, like tetanus, when you um, have a tetanus injection, or perhaps when you go to the dentist and he uh, sticks a, a needle in your roof of your mouth to numb you? Well, having had my whole uh, mouth filled with amalgam fillings when I was younger and that's another, you know, aspect we should mention to the mercury poisoning, right? Uh, because that's contained in amalgam fillings. Um, I, I've had to have many visits with the dentist, um, and I've actually had my teeth drilled with no anesthesia, and it's not pretty. So mm -hmm. that that's the only situation in which I will allow <clears throat> myself to be injected, but I still don't even like that. You know, I have to right. trust my dentist. And what about as the tetanus? Any, huh? What about the tetanus? No vaccine is safe. They're injecting you with tetanus toxoid. It's a poison. Right. And this is very, this is a very interesting thing. I Does want that cause sterilization? Concerned. The tetanus jabs. Uh, well, that's the, that's the main vaccine in which they're putting the uh, human chorionic gonadotropin that I talked about uh, prior. That's that's the infertility vaccine that they're giving to people. But this botulinum toxin. See, this is what's really amazing. We have one family of bacteria called Clostridia, um, and, and the botulinum is in that family, and the, and the tetanus is in that family. Mm -hmm. Now, they're telling us tetanus is really, really bad, and so you have to be injected with the poison from the tetanus bacteria, and that's going to supposedly protect you if right. you step on a dirty nail. But right. yet they have the botulinum that they're making Botox out of, which paralyzes, you know, the muscles in your face and things of that nature, and they're giving that as a cosmetic procedure, but mm -hmm. it's also actually a vaccination. Yeah, well, I suggest that if uh, around the world, if people want to improve uh, road safety, uh, to run out and get run over by a car. Because if you're being injected with something that's supposed to protect you from that um, uh, toxin, and you're being injected with that toxin. What's the difference? If you want to avoid um, being uh, uh, trampled by a train, 
then uh, run on the train track. It's the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, that will protect you. Well, actually, that brings up um, a very hard thing for me. When I was a trauma surgeon at the busiest trauma center in the world, Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn, uh, right. before I woke up, um, I actually would give tetanus shots to you know patients that came in after gunshots, stab wounds, or uh, motor vehicle accidents, etc. Uh, yeah. I have no clue how many people I injured by doing that, but I didn't know any better. See, it's one Close. thing if you don't know. Once you know, that's another issue. But, in fact, it's totally insane because uh, working at this busiest trauma center in the world, I never saw a single case of tetanus, not one. And these are people, right. you know, homeless people. That's why they experimented on them so much. Uh, people with no money that are basically on Medicaid and things of that nature. Um, not a single case of tetanus. Tetanus, um, I'm sure it exists, but I, I've never seen a person with it. And the the bottom line is, um, if you're if you're gonna get hurt, uh, like in your home, I had a client one time. Her little daughter uh, fell with a glass that just came out of the dishwasher, and um, the glass broke, and she cut lacerated her leg. And the mother made the mistake of when she went to the emergency room. When they asked her if the child was vaccinated, the mother said no. And next thing you know, they're trying to take not just that child, but all four of her children away from her because she wasn't vaccinated. The child's wound healed just fine. And, you know, you're not going to get tetanus from a glass out of the dishwasher. Basically, right. where you're going to encounter tetanus, or so I learned, is like in a pasture, especially where they have horses. So even if you've gotten some, you know, uh, abrasion, if you're riding a motorcycle or something, you get into a, a, an accident, you're still not going to be exposed to tetanus. So why are they pushing it so much? It's because of what we've been discussing. Want, I wanted to, you did touch on um, about some of the audiovisual um, uh, entrainment. It, it, audiovisual entrainment in HD yes. televisions. Could you expand on that just a little bit more? That was quite um, quite interesting. Yes, well, actually, you know, this is why the box was developed in the first place. I call it Tell Live Vision. They're telling lies for our vision. Right. Um, there, there's mo more truth in the mainstream media. I'm sorry, more truth in the in the movies like X-Files and things of that nature, uh, Doctor Who. Uh, more truth in shows like that than there actually is on the mainstream media. But... They've been uh, practicing with different things for a long time. Subliminal programming, where they would, you know, flash up um, a message uh, in between different frames of whatever they're playing on, on the tube, you know. And they do this at movies as well, you know. Buy Coke and popcorn. They, you know, they're flashing that to you mm -hmm. during the beginnings of the movie. And so that that's what gets people to say, oh, I'm hungry for popcorn and a Coke. And so... This was started, as far as I know, as like a way to get the sheep to, you know, react in a certain way that they wanted. Uh, but now it's been it's been weaponized. Uh, these silent sound technologies are uh, basically not only doing the subliminal programming, but also um, sending you frequencies that can actually alter the function of your brain. Right. And that's why. Um, I do watch the tube a lot. That I monitor it because that's how I, I get, uh, you know, material for the shows that I do and things of that nature. Yeah. But um, you have to be really careful. The TV I have is an analog TV. It's over 20 years old, and I do yeah, not mine put too. it in the same room mine that too. I'm usually in. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you've got an HD TV, and especially now they're um, doing all this 3D stuff. And once yep. again, this was an amazing article that I found recently That's in the another level, paper. Yeah. I don't have it. I don't have it in front of me. There was an article in the paper how many people are getting headaches and vomiting and things like that just from watching with those 3D goggles that they sell now with the TV. Yeah. Are they stopping it? Are they researching it? Why is this happening? No. Mm -hmm. They're continuing to push this stuff. And if you're not lucky enough to, uh, to see that article, because they do tell us what they're doing, that's how... In some way, that's that's how they basically consider themselves, you know, uh, informing us. This is our informed consent. Yeah. So if you don't see that that article and you get a, you know, new TV with those goggles, 
and everybody in the house starts vomiting and, you know, has vertigo and all these different things, well, what are they going to think? I guess they'll think they got the flu. And what you know, about... What they're about... not going to have any clue. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. What about digital television? We have digital over here. Right. Well, that's what I'm talking about, the digital. <clears throat> Uh, that's where the sound of silence frequencies are coming through. And that's why here in the States they pushed everybody. It was really amazing. I mean, Congress made available, I forget how many millions or billions of dollars that people that don't have cable or dish or whatever, they still gave them boxes so that they could, you know, transform their image uh, to the high high definition, even with the analog TVs. And so that's when I realized, yep, okay, it's the boxes that are now going to be transmitting these frequencies. But my point was, with the 3D, it brings it to the next level. Yeah. You are listening to The Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio with our guest, Dr. Rebecca Carly, MD. And we'll be right back after these pieces of music. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio with our guest, Dr. Rebecca Carley, MD. And we've covered a lot this evening about the vaccines and their ingredients and their effects and why you should not take them under any circumstances. In fact, just stay away from needles generally altogether for the rest of your life and you'll live longer. That's basically the message we're getting out there to people today. Do not take the vaccines. Listen to this lady. She's an expert. She spent many, many years studying this. They tried to destroy her career because she's telling the truth. That is the new world order. That is the way they work. They dis discredit you, um, bump you off in some cases. So as, if there's more and more people telling the truth and getting out there, they can't get us all. Um, exactly. Dr. Carly, uh, if, you, sorry. Uh, if I could just expand it, I want to say not just vaccines. Anybody that's taking any drug, yep. go on to a search engine, type in the name of your drug, hyphen side effects, and read for yourself what these drugs do. And you'll only read what Big Pharma admits to. But they all have mental, emotional, psychiatric effects, for example. Uh, there's even been studies done in this country. They're now using high blood pressure medication to erase post-traumatic stress disorder from soldiers uh, because it wipes out their memory. Uh, and it's doing it to all of you that are taking these drugs as well. So you ha you have to do investigation. Don't just allow a needle into your arm or a pill into your mouth because somebody in a white coat wrote your prescription for it. That is very, very dangerous. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most dangerous things you can do. Absolutely. I mean, we know that returning veterans um, in the, from the U.S. Army and the British Army have um, Gulf War Syndrome, it's called, or Guillain-Barre Syndrome. We know that's linked to the shots they give you in the in the forces now. And let me also mention that more soldiers are dying from their vaccines than are even dying from gunfire. Right. That's what you're not learning on mainstream media. Henry Kissinger said himself that um, the military are just animals, just pawns to be used. He did actually say that word, animals. So this is this is what your government think of you. And um, they'll stab you up with uh, murderous vaccines. So they're not on your side. In fact, returning veterans are, are classed as potential terrorists by Senator Lieberman. And um, mm -hmm. I played a clip. Mm -hmm. on, I, I played a clip on my last show of um, Guy Razor, who's... Um, that's actually his real name, Guy Razor. He was a decorated fighter pilot, and he rang up Senator Liebman's office and left a message uh, stating his views in no uncertain terms. So, um, and he said himself, after four and a half years of, of my own research, I'm convinced that 9-11 was an inside job, and I don't appreciate, uh, Americans don't appreciate being called terrorists, and uh, we're going to see you behind bars. These politicians, these um, minions in the medical industry will face justice for their war crimes really it's a war on humanity and make no bones about it uh, well you... yeah first of all they created these fake wars so they have an excuse to crack down on the population of our countries as well as yep. you know go over and steal uh whatever from whatever country they want 
Uh, but in, in regards to the military, I'd like to just mention a very uh, important case that people can research. There was uh, a man by the name of Pat Tillman, who was actually a very famous sports star in this country. And um, right. he left his multi-million dollar contract. I'm not big on sports. I think he was a football star, but I, I'm not sure about that. But whatever. He, he uh, signed up for the military because he believed, you know, that we'd been attacked by terrorists. He went over uh, to Iraq and found out the total fraud that was going on. And he um, stated that when he came back, he was going to expose the whole scam. And he was actually killed by, um, you know, the military itself. Uh, they tried to convince the family that he had died of, um, you know, enemy fire, but they smelled the rat because obviously they'd been communicating with him about what he was going to expose. And eventually the military did finally admit that, yeah, oh, we made a mistake. It was, you know, basically what they call friendly fire. And um, the individual that covered that whole thing up was actually promoted to the highest level of the Defense Department. Hmm. He only recently lost his job because he made some snide comment about Obama. But, you know, this is what's going on. Not only that, but this is, I have so many clients who are in the military because they are used as the lab rats for vaccines. They test them on the military first. And um, what happens is they become extremely damaged. They have every kind of disability and disease you can imagine. And then they come back here to the states i don't know what your equivalent of the veterans administration is uh in in the uk i'm sure you have some similar thing but they come back here and then they continue the experiments and, and they give really? them all kinds of weird studies and drugs and um they they basically document what what has mm. happened to the soldiers after they've been exposed to all these toxins and uh Never mind the uranium, the de depleted uranium that they're exposed to. I mean, the weapons and the shells and the bullets have de depleted uranium in them. And they, when they bomb villages or schools or innocent people, uh, they're sent in to clear it up and exposed even more to the uranium. Right. Well, this is how I, I uh, um, talk about Gulf War Syndrome. There's many aspects to Gulf War Syndrome. There are... Um, the pathogens, uh, especially something called mycoplasma incognitus, and there's actually a patent for this germ. This uh, very sick individual, his name is Xin Ching Lo, out of the American uh, Registry of Pathology in Washington, D.C., patent number 5,242,820, patented in September 7th of 1993. He actually patented... This germ called mycoplasma incognitus, incognitus means it can hide anywhere, and this is the actual germ that calls, causes what I call the Gulf War plague. Right. This is transmittable to family, oh uh, friends, uh, doctors, uh, pets, uh, all kinds of things. And then you have the other aspects to the Gulf War syndrome, which include the depleted uranium, the aspartame they're giving them, in, in the different beverages that they're drinking, um, the peritostigmine pills, uh, all kinds of uh, poisons they're giving to the soldiers. Because you see, once they use them up, they don't want them coming back here like Pat Tillman was going to do exactly. and telling us the truth about what's going on. They want to either kill them off as fast as they can um, to prevent them from opening their mouths and also so they don't have to pay disability payments to them. Well... Uh... <laughs> They're taking the, the widow's pension away from them, you know, their own military. When when the when the when the soldier returns uh, in a box, uh, fighting an illegal war for his what he believes is his, is his country, um, the widow's pension is taken away. They're robbing everyone's pension. It's it's daylight robbery all over the planet. But also, they don't exactly. want people. Uh, that they're expecting civil unrest. They want civil unrest for 30 yes. years, for 30 years. So they don't want fully armed, trained citizens wandering around, healthy and walking. Another excellent point, exactly. And, and, and let me just mention this whole idea about civil unrest anyway. See, um, 
I don't know what the military oath is, you know, in the UK, but uh, when the military here sign up on the dotted line, of course, they're not told they'll go to the, the clink if they don't take experimental vaccines and right. other drugs I was ask uh, about without that, yeah. their consent. But um, they are told to take an oath to protect the, the country from enemies from without or within. Right. Now, there comes a point where they must realize where the enemies are, and lots of them are in the District of Criminals here in the States. And just like you said, if they would actually take their oath seriously and take care of business, just like we're now seeing in some of the Arab co countries uh, where even the military is basically defecting and they're saying, you know, we're not going to support this tyrant. Um, and, and so they don't want that to happen. But I just want to also mention that they want martial law. As soon as, as, soon as the people rise up, they're going to have an ex excuse to, you know, bring about martial law and checkpoints and all kinds of stuff. Another excuse to get rid of the Internet and all of these things. So there's got to be another way. And, and I suggest everybody watch the movie V for Vendetta. We don't have a V, uh, but certainly it shows the power of the people just standing and saying, we're not going to take it anymore in a peaceful way. And that's what has to happen, in my opinion. Well, I've been following um, Alex Jones's V for Victory campaign, and I've been walking around with a bag and wallpaper paste and a little brush and uh, printing off V for Victory Infowars.com and posting that in, <laughs> in lots of public places. Mm -hmm. So um, it, there is a massive world resistance now. And I mentioned in, in the opening introduction to the show tonight that um, the global banking cartel is, is facing world resistance like never before in history. And uh, Zygmunt Brzezinski himself has said, uh, with his, his kind of voice trembling, that we've never had this much awake people on the planet before in history. So they they well, are they are see, scared, and that's why they're amazing. clamping down so hard. I believe they know it's coming. Yeah. Well, and see, this is this is an amazing thing. Um, here in the states, people just need to investigate the Federal Reserve, which is not federal; it's not a reserve. Right. It's the private private banking cartels, and they print money, and then they charge interest for the money they print. I mean, if that's not the biggest scam of all times, although vaccines rival it certainly, and then you have the global aspect of this, which is called the Inter International Monetary Fund, uh, which basically is giving credit. You know, to third world countries, yeah, we'll give you credit. We'll we'll send you some vaccines. We won't, you know, charge you interest or whatever. Of course, they're actually killing off the population and uh, stealing their natural resources. Um, yep. But it's all the same master template. And see, this is something that um, we talk about on my show on a regular basis. I have a show um, on the Orion Network. Uh, there's a link at the bottom of my website to my show on Saturdays from 3 okay. to 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern. But my co-host has figured out the master template overlay. They do the same thing in all situations. They don't have another plan. And once you can overstand what they do, you can pick it apart so easily. It's truly amazing. And, of course, financial, um, you know, uh, destruction is is what we're seeing happening now all over the globe and once you realize it's all being done on purpose yeah you know they, they they create these um depressions and recessions they steal everybody's house you know they cause them to go into foreclosure and then they build the bubble back up again and then the whole program re repeats itself you know this is what people have to develop the ability to critically think and to logically you know, take all this apart and see what they're doing. And once you see it, there's no turning back. It's like you said, uh, it's a new day. And and the good news is once you realize all these terrible things are being done on purpose, then you realize all we have to do is put these traitors that are committing crimes against humanity. Uh, I visualize a gigantic prison, say in Arizona, where the temperatures get up into the you know, hundreds, in, in a glass prison, let the light shine down on them all day, every day. Of course, they're going to have to get vaccines to enter the prison, uh, but let the people just go by them and ask them hard questions 24-7 because, um, you know, hanging them, it's too good for them. They, oh, they absolutely. More. Oh, well, I, personally, I don't agree with, with hanging or the death penalty myself, but I do 
believe that mo most of these criminals will be brought to justice uh, in a people's court. Now, that is dodgy ground. That is dodgy ground, and, and it, there's room for corruption again. But um, we can't depend on the on the on the present justice system to be honest and do the right thing. So it will come to a point where these criminals are put on trial by the people themselves. Well, I don't even worry about the trial. Let the military, uh, th and this is why I think it's so important to wake up the military. Yeah. Because it's not just the military themselves that are being destroyed, it's their children. Um, it's already been documented that here in the States, um, a, a, a child of somebody in the military has a double risk of having an autistic child. And why is that? Because the vaccines that dad or mom received are transmitted to the child, and then they continue to get vaccinated on top of that. Once these people realize what's been done to them and their families, let them follow their oaths. Uh, as far as the court system, I have absolutely no uh, confidence in the court system. And I don't claim to have all the answers, but what I do know is what I've documented in 15 years of research. And also, uh, when I first started this so many years ago, I felt like I was flying alone, you know, as a little bird out there trying to spread the word. Uh, people are waking up in huge numbers. I get over a 1,000 emails a day. If any of you are interested in consults, uh, please uh, either Skype me or call me. That information is on my website because um, I, I miss a lot of emails. But the point is is that even people that didn't want to see what's going on, they're being faced to because their families, their pets themselves are being damaged in so many ways. And there, there comes to be a point. There's an excellent book called The Hundredth Monkey Phenomena. And um, <clears throat> basically what this book talks about, uh, no, it's just The Hundredth Monkey, um, where, like, I think it was chimpanzees on some... Uh, island in the Pacific yeah. uh, figured out that if they washed their coconuts, you know, that basically they could crack them and it was much more delicious. Um, and this consciousness was transmitted to other monkeys on other islands. Obviously, you know, they can't swim. They, they weren't doing uh, a direct transfer of the information. But mm. there's, I, I feel very strongly about the consciousness of the people that have a consciousness. And yeah, right. once this is, is uh, sparked, uh, there's more of us than there is of them, and they are in serious trouble. Well, apparently, um, Alex Jones mentioned that he's worked out from his uh, also 15 years of being on air and doing research that there's about 6,000 world managers. So <laughs> 6.7 or 6.8 billion of us, I fancy our chances, don't you? Yeah, that's, that's a good news. <laughs> Anyway, uh, well, look, as long as you brought up that, let me just mention a very important DVD that people can obtain um, from PBS, Public Broadcasting System, home video, uh, the triple W's dot PBS dot org. It's called Secrets of the Dead Killer Flu. And in this video at 32 minutes, 48 seconds, you will hear one of the main minions, Jeffrey Toffenberger who was involved in going to the Arctic and resurrecting the killer flu from the 1918 um, time period, which, of course, that flu uh, was actually caused by vaccinations given to soldiers in World War One. The so-called Spanish actually, flu, right? Pardon me? The so-called Spanish flu, right? Right, exactly. He actually states, and he works for the... Um, uh, the Institute of Pathology, and this is what he said, and I quote, if we can shed light on why the 1918 virus was so lethal and understand the genetic basis of that, that info can be applied to the emergence of new influenza strains. Mm -hmm. And he says this. I mean, you can hear this minion actually stating that. And when you, when you realize... They went up to dig up dead people that died of this flu. They had to go to the Antarctic because they had to find the ones that were frozen. What mm -hmm. insanity is this where you would know that there was a virus that was so lethal it killed all these people. Of course, actually, the vaccines they gave for the flu killed a lot more people. Yeah. But why are they going to dig it up? And then next thing you know, we're having the H1N1 problem. You know, you can't make this stuff up. 
Um, the FDA flags risk on popular drug used during pregnancy. This article from USA Today by Alison Young. The Food and Drug Administration is now requiring stronger safety warnings for a popular treatment to prevent pregnant women from prematurely giving birth. Women should not be given injections of the drug uh, terbutaline for more than three days because of the potentially uh, for serious maternal heart problems and death, the FDA said Thursday. It is now requiring a boxed warning. The FDA's most serious type of warning be added to the drugs label. Well, they're not telling you about all the other stuff that are, that's well, harmful. So why do you think they Yeah, why do you two think they're mentioning this one. now? First, okay, first of all, unless the patient checks out the drug, they will not know there's a black box warning. When was the last time any of you doctors, you know, gave you information on a black box warning? So that's first of all. Second of all, while they're warning you about this drug, they're injecting you with DPT vaccines that are causing infertility. So mm -hmm. isn't that interesting how that works out? You see, they have to pretend mm -hmm. that they're trying to protect the public. This yeah. is, you know, basically the, the whole scam. These agencies are actually designed to protect the wrongdoers, be it doctors, lawyers, judges, whatever. That's what they do. They protect the wrongdoers, but they have to keep up this scam of making people believe they're being protected because why else are we going to pay for this stuff? Well, that's why I was interested in debunking this article, really. It goes on to say that... Um... The FDA also warned doctors against prescribing a pill form of the drug for any treatments of pre-term labour because it has not been shown to be effective and carries similar risks. And it ends by okay. saying, um, officials at Aleri, A-L-E-R-E, -E, a company that provides terbutaline pump therapy, were unavailable to comment, spokesman Jan McClure said. Okay, I love giving people responses to crap like this because yeah. you know you make it real simplistic so my comment would be so the fda has decided all of these things and that the drug needs a black box warning why aren't they taking it off the market people mm -hmm. why are they even allowing it to be given in the first place oh actually it's um thorpe a professor of obstetrics at the university of north carolina so you might want to knock on his door <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm sure I'd be, uh, you know, met with a SWAT team. Right. But whatever. I mean, you know, it, it's just truly amazing. Like I said, anybody that's taken any medication, check out the side effects for yourself. Remember, it's only what they admit to. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, one of my funniest experiences, um, I have um, a, a potential client. The, the daughter wanted to get a consult for her father who was being killed by the medical mafia. Um, but the son was in control of the finances to buy the products, etc. And she actually did all her research. She printed out the information about what all these drugs do, sent it to the son. And his response was, well, if you read the, the side effects of your drugs, nobody would take anything. And this, this is like <laughs> a talk, talk about insanity. Yeah, yeah, nobody would take anything. So your answer is to shut your eyes, just do whatever the white coat tells you, and, of course, this guy was getting his kidney removed by his white coat because of all the things he'd already been allowed to be done to himself. So, you know, check things out for yourself, people. That's the most important message I can give you. Support the people who are trying to get the word out. Yeah. And um, don't trust the government. And on that note, Dr. Rebecca Carley, M.D., I bid you farewell, and I, I must say it's been an enormous pleasure to speak to you again. I was very much looking forward to speaking to you again, and thank you for all your amazing, um, very, very excellent uh, information. Um, it's beyond, beyond words to say how crucial the work you're doing is to um, helping people stay and, healthy. Thank and you. And right back at you, because without people like you... We wouldn't be uh, getting this viral on a global uh, level. So thank you so much, Patrick, as well. You have been listening to The Free Truth Show on These Changing Times Radio with your host, Patrick Lynch, and our guest, Dr. Rebecca Carley. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. Good night, Dr. Carley.
Good night.